everybody and welcome to another Tuesday Teaching Tips with me, Sally Cathcart from The Curious Piano Teachers. And I hope you're all having a, a great day wherever you are in the world. But today I just wanted to pop in and um, just talk about the benefits really of escaping the piano store. Now you might be thinking, well, what do you mean, Sally, escaping the piano store? Well, it doesn't matter whether we're doing face to face or whether we, you're doing an online lesson. They tend to happen with everybody sitting at the piano stool, don't they? I can be sitting here, as I have been this morning, you know, on my stool, and my student is sit, sitting on their stool on the whole and delivering their lesson. Um, and I think there are problems when we just sit on the piano stool. Uh, I think the first thing is it drains the energy that we, the, the, the energy all kind of can dissipate. It's also really, really hard work for both parties just to sit still all the time. We actually can generate more energy if we're standing up, sitting down, changing our position. The other reason why I think that it's important to escape the piano stool is because it's not really where the hard work happens. The hard work doesn't happen at the piano stool. Because what happens, and this is the third reason why we have to escape, is that when we're sitting at the stool, we are drawn to the keyboard. It's like a magnet. We have to play that keyboard, come what may. And again, I don't believe the keyboard is actually where the work happens. The work actually happens in here. And if this is clear about what, what is being played and what has to be played, then actually realising it at the piano is so much easier. And I was doing this yesterday, and you can do this with all ages, adults particularly, but students as well, younger students as well, even children. We know it is internalisation, audiation, whichever word, the thinking voice, whatever you want to call it. It's getting the mental scaffolding in here that's really, really important. And thinking about what it is you need to do instead of trying to solve it with that physical movement here. Hello to everybody, by the way, who's who's watching. I'll come back and talk to you in a moment. So I was doing it yesterday with a young pupil who um, is learning the lesson in C in the grade two ABRSM. And he was working on this bit at the end. I love that chord. And of course, what you've got there is you've got these two chords. You've got chord 2B here in the left hand, 5, 7 here and then one and that's quite a move really going from that to b because it's got the f a and d and then you have to move up to the five seven and what i did was i got him to stand up i said okay stand up and we both did the same and he tucked his chair in so the music is sitting there on his piano and mine is there as well and we had to think about it we had to talk about well what fingers are you using there and he was telling me what the fingers are one five three and one and then five, two and one, I, you know, what's the common note? Which note do all those chords have in common? There is a D, yeah, if one moment it's with the thumb and then it's with the second finger. What does the little finger do? And all these questions are helping him to be curious. They're helping him to think through the physical movement that his hand has to make. So having done that, he, he then kind of played it in his head. He, you could see him looking at it like that and he was hearing it and then he would look at the piano and he looks at the movement on the piano okay and then before I let him play it I said now walk over to the other side of the room and then come back and play it straight away don't come back and this was a bit of a you know let's hope he comes back at all um, don't come back until you've got it in your head so not only was he having to think through the movement and hear the sound he was also having to be have that picture of the keyboard and the notation in his head as well. All really, really powerful stuff. Which meant that when he came back, he was able to go and just go. Like that. So moving away from the piano stool, escaping the piano stool is so important for you as a pianist and a musician, but also for your students to do. And you can have a lot of fun with it because with online lessons, I find we can be really, really stuck to that piano stool. And if you see your students yawning, which they do, then just get them up, 
get them to do something different get them to think the music in their head get them to internalize it to sing it to go and play it on top of somewhere different you know on a shelf or something can they tap a rhythm finding somewhere different just moving away from the piano stool which can lock us down and create all sorts of problems so that is my little teaching tip for today and I'm just going to come back and say hello to a few people. I can see Nina is watching. Hello Nina. I can wave I believe. Wow yes and Katrina. Hi Katrina and Andrew. Hi Andrew. Lovely to see you there and Kathleen as well and Anastasia. Hello and Melanie's there. Fantastic and Sue is out there as well. Lovely that so many of you have come to join me today. Next week will be the last teaching tip actually for the moment because then we're going to have a quick summer break and actually it's not going to be on Tuesday it's going to be on Wednesday because very excitingly uh, those of you who've been watching my hair get longer and longer next Tuesday I shall be having my hair cut at this time so I shall see you on Wednesday instead and for the very last Tuesday teaching tips Wednesday wisdom whatever of the year the academic year thanks for watching bye for now <laughs>